الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله My dear brothers and sisters according to the UNICEF 22,000 children die every single day out of poverty Almost half of the world's population live below the line of poverty on $2.5 a day. And my brothers, this is not due to the lack of wealth. This is not due to the lack of food to feed everyone. But this is due to the inequality in distribution of wealth between us. In the way that the system we have, have this transaction between the rich and the poor so that the rich only becomes richer and the poor only becomes more poor. And my brothers and sisters, in Islam, we have a ibadah, actually a pillar of Islam, that's there to solve this problem and many other issues. And this is the pillar of zakah. The Prophet ﷺ explained, saying, min aghniyaihim faturaddu fi fuqara'ihim. It is the wealth, the money that's taken from the riches, the rich people, and given to their poor. And in the Quran, Allah is saying why this happens. He says, So that money doesn't just circulate between the rich people among you. So that money doesn't stay with the 1%. And then everyone else is poor. So that we don't have a situation where half of the humanity are living, are struck by poverty. And I want you to imagine like back in the days when the zakah system was flourishing, when there was 
a system in place. And what's really unique and interesting is that the bulk of zakah collected back in this time wasn't money. It wasn't gold and silver. The bulk of collected money or the bulk of collected wealth was from crops and cows and sheep and all sorts of wealth. So imagine being in this society where everyone is spending a very small part, portion of his fortune and giving the excess to the poor. And now the country or the government is now giving away this collected wealth, which is hundreds of thousands of sheep or cows or camels or all sorts of corpse, dates, wheat, everything. So now as a, as a community, we look and see who is in need of what. This person needs a cow to get some milk and maybe start a business. That person needs a camel for a way of transport. So the, the community as a whole is fulfilling their needs through the obligatory zakah, which is the pillar of Islam. And my brothers, this extra 2.5% that is paid by the wealthy person, you wouldn't even feel it. When you spend 2.5% of your wealth, which is extra, which has stayed with you for an entire year and you haven't used, this money, even, even as little as it is, it doesn't go away. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla and the Prophet promised us, مَا نَقُصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٌ The money will come back to you. It's, it's a guarantee. It's not going to go anyway. But there is a sad reality. If you look at the statistics and numbers, if you estimate the amount of wealth in the countries, which is Muslim, major, Muslim majority countries, and if you look at the poor conditions of the minorities of Muslims everywhere, you will understand that most of the Muslims, or many Muslims, don't pay their obligatory salah or zakah. And actually, researchers say, if some Muslims, not all of them, pay some sorts, some kinds of zakah, not all the kinds of zakah that they should pay, this whole problematic situation in most of the country, the poor people around, will not exist, will vanish, if only some people pay part of their zakah. During earlier stages in our ummah, they would collect zakah and they would say, Ya Amir al we don't find anyone who is needy of zakah. What should we do with the money? We have the money, people are paying their zakah and no one needs money. This is how the situation is supposed to be today. And before explaining what zakah is, let's look at the word. In the Quran, there are two words used to explain this pillar of Islam. The first word is sadaqah. Sadaqa, and interestingly, these two words, sadaqa and zakah, these two words previously in, in Arabic language wasn't there. It wasn't used for the sake of giving money at all. Islam came and put these two new words to explain giving charity. The first word is sadaqa. Sadaqa is coming from the word sidq, truthfulness. As if it is the proof of the truthfulness of your iman. You say, I'm a mu'min, but can you actually give away part of your wealth and sadaqah and give it away to someone who is poor without telling anyone about it? Well, if you can, then you're proving to Allah Azza wa Jal that you have true iman. The Quran says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful are the believers. And then one of the attributes of them, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ And those who perform their zakah. And the second word, for charity is obviously zakah. And zakah is coming from the word purification. When you pay your zakah, you are purifying the money that you have. When you have this much wealth and you're taking part of it away in the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, you are purifying what you have. You're purifying your soul. These are the two words mentioned in the Quran about charity. So let us define what zakah is. Zakah is obligatory on every adult Muslim whether a man or a woman. When they have a certain amount of wealth, when their net worth is above a certain limit, and stayed with them for an entire hawl, which is a lunar or Islamic year. When you have a certain amount of money that passed a full Islamic year with you, having decreased then the limit, then now you're eligible to pay zakah. Zakah is, is needed in several kinds of wealth. Number one, your cash, the currency. 
if you have money in the bank or money at home, this cash, liquid money, you have to spend the cash on this. What if your money is kept in gold and silver, same, the equivalent of the gold and silver? Another attribute is those who have farms and they have cro crops or cows or sheep, they have to spend a bit of this. And those who are investing, those who are investing in stock market or investing in properties, there is some kind of different zakat on this. So on different types of wealth that we have, there is different type of zakat that we need to pay on it. And the limit for the zakat on our cash is 85 grams of gold. If your cash equivalent is more than 85 grams of gold and it stayed for a full lunar year with you, then you have to pay zakat on this. What is this equivalent to us in New Zealand dollars? About 4,000 New Zealand dollars in today's money. If you have more than that money stayed for a year, then you have to pay zakat. And you pay zakat at the proper timing. When the money passes one year, you spend it. And there is a mistake that many of us do. And my brothers and sisters, please be wary of this. You know, we all know about salah. Salah is a pillar of Islam. We have to pray it on its proper time, do its proper arkan with the proper niyyah, intention, at the proper time. You can't just say, I'm going to pray late at night before I sleep, I'm going to pray 20 rak'ah. And that's enough. In between, somewhere, <coughs> there is fajr, there is zuhr, there is asr. Just someone else do the math and I just did my fard. I did it all at night. We can't do that with salah. Salah is a fard. It has to be done properly at the proper timing. And similarly, we can't just say, oh, well, roughly I should pay that money. And I have paid throughout the year this much. Somewhere in between there is my zakah. It's done. We can't do this with the pillar of Islam. We cannot. This zakah needs to be calculated. It needs to be spent in the right means. Not any sadaqah can be counted zakah. There were many occasions in the life of the Prophet ﷺ where someone would come, needs some money or wants some money. The Prophet would say, no, wait. When I have money from sadaqah, I will give you. Because sadaqah is flexible. We can give sadaqah in pretty much everything. But zakah, there are different, there are eight specific means mentioned in the Quran where we can spend our zakah. You know, when you put the money with a masjid that they have a zakah box, they treat it specifically different. They always have the bank account and referencing zakah because this money, there is means for it. I can't just spend it in maintaining the masjid. I can't just pay it to a hospital. No. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها والمؤلفة قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين وفي سبيل الله وبن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم. These are the eight different paths of zakah, and I will talk today about three of them. The first two categories are الفقراء والمساكين. الفقراء those who are poor, those who have no money. Basically, those who are who doesn't have enough resources to fulfill their basic needs. So when they come and ask for money, they are eligible for the zakah. When the masjid examines their conditions and see that they are eligible for the zakah, they give them from the money. Number two, al-masakeen. Al-masakeen are the kinds of people who have some sort of resources, but it's not enough to fulfill their basic needs. Yes, they may be having a job. They have, you may look at them and they are dressed well. The, their job requires dressing in a suit. But if you really examine their conditions, they are in deep need for money. And usually they are not asking people. So they need money, they may be in debt, but they're not asking. Allah says about them, يَحْسَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُ أَغْنِيَاءَ مِنَ التَّعَفُّ فِي تَعْرِفُهُمْ بِسِيمَاهُمْ لَا يَسْئِلُونَ النَّاسَ إِلْحَافَ The ignorant person would look at them and say, hey, they are rich, they are in no need for money. But you will know them from the characteristics. They never really ask people for money. And look at the beauty of this deen. Look at the beautiful of this deen. Allah Azza wa is saying, they don't ask people at all, whatsoever. They don't ask. They are in need, but they don't ask. And here, the zakah system tells the organizations that are spending in zakah that you need to look out for people who need money. Not just those who come knock your door and say, I'm poor. 
No, you need to go out and examine the conditions and see if someone out there is in need for money and give them money. Beautiful Islamic, beautiful society where everyone in need, whether he says or is shy to say, they're getting their money. And the third category that I will talk about today is Now imagine a big society where everyone is giving out his zakah. Hundreds of thousands of wealth of all sorts. And now we have a big community where many people are requiring for help. So we need to examine this, the situation and the cases of those who need help. And we need to calculate the wealth that is required for everyone to spend in charity. And we need to transfer this to that and see who needs what and takes it. Who will do this job? <coughs> there has to be some employees to do all these calculations, all this money, all this system. And this beautiful system is self-sufficient. We, we don't have to have people who are poor and begging to, to do all these calculations and then, then don't find anything to eat. Allah is saying, in the Quran, عليها, and those people who are working to collect zakah and calculate it and give it away, they also have to live. So they take portions of this zakah for the Islamic zakah system to be self-sufficient. So now, you have a system that pays its own debt, that have some employees that take money. And usually Islamic organizations set a lot of restrictions to avoid, to eliminate, to make it very little overhead so that most of the money is going to those who are really poor or really in need. My brothers and sisters, it's very important to be mindful of the farida or the pillar of zakah. It's very important to give it its due right. As we give focus on the salah, pray it on time, it's important to, to calculate our zakah properly and spend it on time. Many of us would love to spend their zakah in Ramadan. But zakah is time limited, similar to salah. If you take your wealth, if you got some money on Ramadan, then it's due to pay zakah on Ramadan, the next one. If you take it in Sha'ban, then it's due in Sha'ban. You can't say it's due in Sha'ban, but I will just wait one month till Ramadan and spend it there. By the way, people who need money, need money all year long. This social system is made such that every month we have people who spend in charity, spend in zakah. So people are there to take, who are in need, take money all year long. You can pay your zakah before it's due, but you cannot pay it after it's due. You can pay a little bit more if you want, but you can't pay less. So it's important to calculate it wisely. If you want to spend extra with the intention of zakah in the proper path of zakah, it's fine. If you want to pay it a little bit earlier, it's fine, but don't delay it after it's due. And I want to remind you with something. The family of the Prophet ﷺ, one day, they had a goat. So Aisha radiallahu anha gave parts in sadaqah. And then the Prophet is asking her, what has remained from the goat? She says, nothing has remained except the shoulder. We gave everything away and we just kept the shoulder. The Prophet made a correction to the statement, a very beautiful one. He says, no. بَقِيَ كُلُّهَا غَيْرَ كَتِفِهَا Everything of the, everything in the goat has remained except the shoulder. This shoulder you kept for us to eat now, it's gone. Few moments later, it will be gone. But whatever you gave away in charity, it stayed forever. Baqiya kulluha, except for the shoulder. My brothers, whatever you spend in charity, remember, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ Whatever you spend in the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal will be repaid back to you in full. And there is no injustice. اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة